Apartheid is actually uh, a partner of segregation. in South Africa there were different signs white, non-white that's how it went I will come and hand out tickets the tickets will be classifying you that are you white or non-white you enter the museum on your ticket and you know the, the non-whites are supposed to have a more difficult experience getting into the museum because of that we were walking in and he had everyone's ID photos to the right of you was very struck me as almost too familiar the way that we can oppress each other with you know requiring documentation of this and that and just setting limits around each other seeing the maze that they had to go through and kind of the caged walls um it, i think that's going to stick with me the you know the longest and the, the deepest when we had the uprising my mother was part of that which was the students my mother was part of those students and she was caught by the police. She was kicked in the ribs like, until they turned green. And she didn't want to become part of that anymore. There's a, a level of inner thought of just like what drives a human being to treat other human beings this way. I was unaware of the history of nationalism that led to apartheid. You kind of only see it as this idea of you know, black versus white, but it's reflecting very interestingly what's going on at home. Seeing the struggle that this country has has gone through for for civil rights and equality, um, you can't help but stop and, and think about what's going on in our part of the world. It was a very stoic reminder of, you know, how easily hate can uh, become the normal thing. When you're walking in the city center of Johannesburg on the sidewalk and a white person approached you, you're supposed to jump onto the street and give them the right of way. This all has happened in the last 40 to 60 years. A lot of the numbers and the dates that they're putting up on the walls and the dates that I'm reading are ones that have existed in my timeline. And then you start thinking about, oh, well, I was just born or I was three or what was going on in my life during this time period and the fact that I didn't know that this was happening here. What we're dealing with today with the resistance and the backlash is a continuation of the story of slavery, the story of genocide, the story of Jim Crow, and the current moment of mass incarceration and militarized borders that we're dealing with right now. So what does what does truth and reconciliation look like? <laughs> She did get an education, she became a tourist guide. She was the first black national tourist guide in South Africa. And after guiding for a couple of years, she left uh, tourism and she opened up her own restaurant in, in Soweto. My grandmother wouldn't even leave her bedroom. She was scared. She'll tell my mother that, do you know what? As you are bringing white people here into this house, if the police come, I'm not involved. You know, you can change the laws, but it is very, very hard to change people's minds. We don't try to change people's minds. We simply tell people who we are. She never wanted a white person in front of her, and she always used to submit to a white person. And it took my grandmother for about two and a half years to start recognizing that no, now things have changed. But today she doesn't do that anymore because she now knows we are all equal. It really makes the music that we're about to perform all the more important, I think, for us as we go back to Boston, as we go back to the States. That's certainly my hope, that we'll be able to learn, we'll be able to 
change hearts and minds in new ways based on the relationships and the perspectives that we gain here in South Africa. Show, show